do my makeup, but the one person I trusted, touched by Gloria, did not disappoint me. Uh, she's done my makeup twice, and I must say, both times she just shocked me. Um, the thing that I love about Gloria is that as she's doing your makeup, she gives you tips. She talks you through whatever she's doing. She gives you recommendations. She analyzes your face and she's able to tell you um, and recommend you products that would work for you and products that maybe you should stay away from. I, I love Touch by Gloria and I can't wait to go back to get my face slayed. Hello. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome to Touch by Gloria. So my name is Gloria and I welcome you all to today's segment. And we are live, so I will kindly ask you to help me share this broadcast. Share within your friends. And I'll be right back in the next minute. I'll be back after this promo clip. In the meanwhile, let's share and welcome. Hi, I'm Debra. And yeah, I don't normally trust people to do my makeup, but the one person I trusted, touched by Gloria, did not disappoint me. Uh, she's done my makeup twice, and I must say, both times she just shocked me. Um, the thing that I love about Gloria is that as she's doing your makeup, she gives you tips. She talks you through whatever she's doing. She gives you recommendations. She analyzes your face and she's able to tell you um, and recommend you products that would work for you and products that maybe you should stay away from. I, I love Touch by Gloria and I can't wait to go back to get my face slayed. Hello, hello, and welcome back, welcome back. So welcome to today's live section. One moment. Hello, hello, and welcome back, welcome back. So welcome to today's live section. Okay, I hope we are all rolling smoothly apologies for the technical issues but you are all welcome before i begin i would like to say leave a comment below and let me know where you are watching from let me know where you are watching from help me share and let us begin so today we are gonna talk about brushes but before i begin so my name is Gloria and I am the CEO, founder, director of Touch by Gloria. And Touch by Gloria is a brand that specializes in makeup. I also do fashion and style as well as graphic design. So for instance, with posters and promo clips and all of that. And in fashion, I do put out videos where I, you know, bring out style, so how to style a denim, for instance, or how to style pleated skirt, and all those things that, as women, we need on our daily basis to look good. So Touch by Gloria is all about makeup, fashion and beauty, as well as graphic design. But on this segment in particular, I am going to highlight on the makeup. And so I am based in London, England, 
and I am available in the UK and worldwide. So no matter where you're watching me from, if you want to have a booking for any occasion whatsoever, I am available. So some of the services that I provide is bridal, photo shoots, catwalks, and all other events. So whatever the occasion may be, I've got you covered. So I want you to like the page and follow the page so that you keep up with all the things that I upload and all the things that I share in that. So today we are going to talk mainly about brushes. Brushes. We all love brushes, right? Some don't know how to use brushes. Others run away from brushes because they actually don't know where to begin. Now, I want to enlighten how makeup can be diverse and how you can use them. Makeup brushes can be diverse and how you can use them. Um, oftentimes when people buy brushes, so for instance, if they buy a brush that has foundation written at the bottom, they use that only for foundation and they will now go and purchase another one that says concealer, purchase another one that says highlighter and so on and so forth. So we tend to spend a lot of money on makeup products, one of which I believe we can save money on. Um, also, other thing is our blending techniques. Oftentimes we feel the brushes may not be good, but it is normally because of how we blend it, how you hold it, where you place it on your face, the size of the brush, the texture, how dense the bristles are. So it's vital to know all these things when it comes to brushes. One other thing, you can also get a very inexpensive brush and get a quality result. You don't have to go and buy brands in the name of brushes to get excellent results. Personally, I believe you can always, always get a good enough brush that will cost you, for instance, five pounds on Amazon, an eye brush set, which would do the trick just fine. You don't have to go and spend, you know, uh, 20 pounds on one brush that just to create a look that you can probably spend less than five pounds on a brush to get. So we are going to go into that. But one thing before I show you some of these brushes that I want you to be cautious about when you're buying it, I know when you buy a brush, um, it is normally packaged. So you're not able to play with it, to see how it works and you know feel the density and all of that. So the best thing to do is when you buy it and you go home or you know wherever you may be, um, try dip it in water. So get it wet and ruffle your hands around it. So when you wet the brush, you know, just play with it and see how does it look? How does it feel? Do bristles come off, you know, or is it just all right? Because when you play with that, you now know and then be cautious of it shedding. When it's shedding, that is a good no-no, especially if you're using it on clients. If it's for you, personal use, that is absolutely fine because it is your skin. You can take off the, you know, the mini bristles that come on your skin. But if it's for your clients, you have to be very cautious um, if it's shedding because one, your clients may want to pick that bristle that feels really uncomfortable and they'll mess up your work. And two, they might not trust you. They might feel that you're not, you know, you're not investing in good quality stuff to apply it on their face. But with that being said, brushes are still brushes, all right? So let's get into it. So now we have brushes for our base. Yeah, we have brushes for cheeks. We have brushes for lips. We have brushes for eyes. You name it, we have it all. So what tends to happen oftentimes, as I said earlier, is that we have brushes that can multitask, but we don't know that. So we tend to spend a lot money on brushes. So let me show you, let's go into the base. So we know 
that a good foundation brush, now when you go to the store, you may have some brushes that may come, let me show you. We may get some foundation brushes that come like this. You may have foundation brushes that come like this, or you may have foundation brushes that come like this. So this is your classic kabuki brush. So kabuki brush are your very dense bristled brushes, yeah? And so with this, we know, you normally see the pros use this a lot. And what we do or what the pros tend to do, you use this for foundation, you just mainly apply it on your base and then get a blending brush or a beauty blender, which is very popular. Let me show you a beauty blender. So one of these beauty blenders that we all know, we can use this to blend out or use this to blend. But with this, as much as I like its precision of the foundation application, it still leaves you with streaks. So when you, when you use this for application, it is still best to use that to blend it out or use this to blend it out, okay? So don't worry if you have this and you feel, oh, but I see a lot of people using this or I see a lot of people using this. You will still get the same result so far as you are using it correctly, okay? One thing with Beauty Blender, it absorbs a lot of products. Beauty Blender absorbs a lot of products. And what I mean by that is when you, oftentimes you're told to make sure that it is wet, it is damp, but not overly soaked with water, yeah? So when it is, when you have that texture, you realize at times that when you blend out your foundation, you don't have that enough coverage that you had on before going in with the beauty blender because it absorbs some products. It's a sponge, okay? So when you squeeze out a lot of the water and it just feels nice and soft because it expands once it's wet, when it's nice and soft, you are able to just use that and just dab where you want to blend. But personally, I say use this to spread out your foundation if you want a very, very good coverage, and then use this to blend it out, okay, to blend it out. And you will save products and save some money so you don't run out foundation every two months or so, yeah? Your foundation should be able to last you longer than that. Okay, so using this as a foundation brush, as I mentioned, now, you also, I've also come across um, where I've spoken with some women and they use their kabuki brush for powder. There's nothing wrong with that, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you wanna use this for powder, then personally, you can also use this for foundation, correct? Especially if it is for your own use. Most of these things for your own personal use, I believe you can multitask them, even on clients, because it's just one client. So when you apply your foundation, you want a quick blend, you grab another brush or blending, um, blending sponge, blend it out, concealer just to blend out the edges it will still work just as fine and if you have this to also use that for your powder you can still do that so with my look today what I did do I used one of these kabuki brushes they are the same thing but you can see this has products on it and this doesn't what I did was to use this to set the highlighted areas so this also said as my powder brush, all right? And it does the trick just well. It blends out, you know, the highlighted areas where you want to set it, but not to dust off because you might get a wrong finish. So just use that and dab it in. It's a good, good textured brush to use, especially when you're dealing with liquid products. I generally would advise that you use that. Now, Concealer brushes, but before I go into concealer brushes, let's talk about powder brushes. 
So as I said before, oftentimes people use this for powders, but your classic powder brushes are these. Nice, big, fluffy type of brush or something like this. Something like this. They are very good for your powders, all right? Now, when you have these two, they are great, but when you're working on clients, um, it can be a little bit problematic, especially if it's something like this. I would personally use this to, you know, buff out highlighters on body or bring some products down the neck. This would be very good. And this is also very good because of its shape. It's very tapered. So you're able to just get right in the corners, dust off whatever products that you want to dust off or have a quick, quick, quick blend. This is also good. And you also have something like this which isn't as big as that. Nonetheless, it still does the trick. But if you have one that is this small, do we see how small this is? Very, very, very small. When you have one that, that is this small, it is very good, yeah? It's good to get right in the corners. Or what I do at times, as much as I like the use of the powder brushes, when I really want to get in the corners with the highlighter, I use something like this. Very pointy. It gets right in the corner and you have a good precise application. But if you're a makeup artist watching me, we know that the smaller your brushes, the better, because then you're able to get into the corners when you're working on someone else. But for yourself, just get something that is nicely tapered, loose, so it's able to pick up the product and just swirl it on your face. But let me go back a little bit. With the foundation, as I said before, when you use this flat top brush to apply, you can just use this to stipple over. You can also get a stippling brush, which is something like this. And it also does the same job. Reason why I'm showing you variety is so that you can use what you have instead of you going to always buy a new product or a new brush, yeah? You can use these to do the same thing. Now, with powder, as I said, something nice, fluffy, would do the job. It gets it done. Concealer brushes. So when you are buying a concealer brush, normally you would find some that comes like this, very, 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 very small, and you wonder, what is this gonna do for me? I don't think it's gonna pick any products, or you might think you're wasting time trying to blend, but they are very good. Precise application. now. What you must understand when you're buying a brush, your aim should be, obviously you wanna, know, you wanna be sure that it is good, it is, the brushes are not shedding, but your main point is so that you can get into the parts of your face that you want to. For instance, if you wanna get in between your brows, you want a brush that is able to just go in between the brow, blend out whatever product, if it's under the eye, which normally, people tend to struggle to blend. You can just swirl it around, yeah, and then drag it all out, spread it all out. When you have brushes like this, they are very good. Now, as we know this is a foundation brush, you can also use this for your concealer. Normally, you might find brushes that's like this. This is your classic brush, correct? Now, when we have this, this is able to spread out your concealer very well, precise application, leave it where you want it. So when you want to bake, some of you may understand that terminology, some may not. So baking is when you leave your setting powder underneath your eyes for quite some time before you blend out baking. Not everyone is fond of baking because you do get a much different result, much, much different result. So, 
With this, you are able to apply the concealer exactly where you want it, spread it out, place some here, tidy your eyebrows, yeah? This is a multitask brush as well. You can use this for quite a lot of things. And even if you want to contour, for instance, and you don't have an angled brush, you just place that right there. And then if you have something like this or your normal foundation brush, just spread it out and you'll get the exact same beautiful, beautiful results that you see everyone with, okay? So let's go to our eyes. I know eyes is a number one major uh, query as to do my brushes matter? Um, will it change my application when I'm doing eyeshadows? Um, personally, I say it's a yes and a no. And I'll tell you why. You can have the best brush, but if you don't know how to use it, you will not get the results that you see everyone getting or the pros getting or the result that you personally want, right? How you hold your brush determines how um, your finish will be. If you are very harsh on your brush, you will end up getting some streaks. You cannot avoid that. Okay? If you are very light and gentle with it, you are able to blend very well. You get a good seamless brush um, finish. Now with this look that I have on, I did not use any beauty blender. I know oftentimes uh, it is portrayed as when you have a beauty blender, you get this flawless result, which you do, but I still like my good classic makeup brushes. I feel they do the job just fine. Now, to the eyes, as I mentioned, you have your classic flat shader brushes, which are, um, let me show you. You have your classic, I will use the brushes that I used today earlier on for my eyes so that you guys can see the results you're going to receive, yeah, when you use the brushes. So this is your classic flat shader brush. And what this does, it is good for your eyeshadow application so when you you know get some pigments or whatever uh product it may be shimmer shimmery textured powder textured it is good to dip into your product and just place it on your eyelid if you want to blend also using this brush it's very simple when you place it on your eye just spread it out okay till it is very seamless and you know you are good to go. Okay, and we also have a stiff dome brush. So a stiff dome brush is something, let me see, I have to go through some of these to show you. So this could be your classic stiff dome brush or something like this, just to give you an idea. Something like that. It's your classic stiff dome brush, yeah? It is dense and it is stiff, just as it says. So something like this will be very good for your cut creases, yeah? Especially if you have one that is much, much smaller, like this one. You are able to apply your product very precisely and you don't create a mess. Your stiff domes are good to cut, to define your crease or your decrease, whatever effects that you want to create on your eyes. I know um, cut crease eyes are very popular. Others like it, others find it intimidating because of the effect. Others like it because it's much simpler, whereas you find some who says, I just like my eyeshadow to look blended. I feel cut crease is not a blend look. Hey, makeup is all about personal preference. I can't stress that enough, okay? With Touch by Gloria, my statement is the touch that enhances your features. If I transform you with makeup, then, and you like it, what happens when you take off your makeup? Because you have to be with your own face, yeah? You cannot run away from your face. But when you just know how to enhance your features with makeup and just to bring in that, um, should I use the term beauty into your face, then to me, I'm happy. If you look at yourself and you don't recognize yourself, 
um, there's a problem with that. Okay, so I say touch by Gloria or our statement is the touch that enhances your features. The touch that enhances your features. That is what Touch by Gloria is about. Hi, Deborah. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. And thank you, Rose, as well, for coming on. And also, um, Ntombi, thank you also for coming on. Yeah, I'm just going through the comments briefly. So with cut crease, as I was saying, you have a good dome brush that can create that. Now, when you have a dome brush, obviously, you still need a blended brush, correct? You cannot, I don't think you can create an eyeshadow without a blending brush because at some point you still need to blend outward, yeah, to your outer corner eyes, which is this area right here. You need something that you'll be able to swirl around to just blend. So even if it's three shades that you're using, a blending brush is a must have. So a blending brush is something like this. And this is by Real Techniques. This is a good blending brush or something like this, yeah, or something like that. All these are blending brushes that, but the only difference is some are tapered, some are not. We also have our pencil um, brushes, which is something that is like that, very pointy. I used this today for my base because I went in with a black base before going in with the blue so it can really pop. And what I did do was use this to apply the liner right in my outer corner and just blend it with this before going in with another brush to even diffuse it even more, something like this. It's a very small brush and it does the job. Okay. and. Another classic brush for the eyes are uh, your angled. Now, angled brushes, I don't know how advanced most of you are, but you find that angled brushes now, it's more emphasized when it comes to your eyebrows. Um, so let me show you an angled brush before I speak. So this is your classic angled brush, yeah? So with this, as you can see, it is cut and you have that angled shape, yeah? So what this does, if you're using it on your eyebrows especially, you get that super arched finish if you use this. Personally, I prefer a flat brush. So for instance, the one that I showed you earlier, okay. Something this flat to me is just fine. I'll be able to get my um, my eyebrows done. This is the bigger version. Remember we used this about the concealer. So a much smaller version of that, you are able to use that also for your brows. If you used an angle for your brows, you are most likely gonna get an arch finish, which most people do like, and it's fine. But um, this is mainly for eyeliner. You also have different types of eyeliner brushes, okay? So we have some that is this small. We have others that are this small. Very, very petite, yeah? All these are good and precise for your eyeliner. Um, one thing with makeup in general, no matter what you're playing with, but particularly with eyeliner, you start off small and you build, okay? Because once you create a hot mess with a chunk line coming down your eye, all your eyeshadow has disappeared because it's all now covered in black. So the best thing is to get the smallest brush that you can get your hands on, very tiny, pointy, and just slightly build. Advisably, start from the corners, yeah, where your lash line ends, right from the outer corner. Bring it to the middle, extend if you want, and then bring it down to your inner corner. But if you feel you've made a mess, just get a nice small concealer brush and just tidy. One other tip, okay. So those are your classic must have for your eyes. So now when we come to cheek, we like to contour, highlight, blush, bronze. 
Okay, all these may sound a bit too much for some, but they are very good. I mean, if you want to have a good defined look, for instance, like this, you might have to go through all those steps, yeah? And in that, for your cheeks, you have contour brushes. And your contour brushes are normally angled, yeah? They are normally angled. So it has that cut. It has that cut. And what this does, as it is already cut for you, you don't have to do much. Your job is just to place it on your cheek above, spring it downwards. And it gives you that angled contour look that we all like, yeah? So this is a good contour brush. And you can also use that foundation brush that I showed you earlier. Um, let me grab one. This sort of foundation brush, okay, yeah. You can use this type of foundation brush and it also does the job just fine, angled, you are good to go. And you can also grab your hands on an actual angled brush, which is this size, but it's also cut for you so you can get your precise application as well. Now, when you come to highlighter, highlighter, you find some people like to go for a much smaller brush to be able to blend out their highlights. And you find some like to go for the classic fun brush to place the highlights. Either ways, it works just as fine. But you find with a, with a fun brush, it blends very well. And you are able to get to the highest point of your cheeks without, you know, stressing, trying to find where to go. It does the job just fine. It blends just fine. So this is very good for your highlighter. And you can also go in with, let's say, a brush this small, if you're using a liquid um, highlighter. When you apply that other highest point in your cheeks, just swirl it and blend. One thing with liquid, oftentimes people are afraid of it. They feel you have to use it on your foundation before going in with your powder or after powder, you may not necessarily want to use it, which I understand because obviously when you put liquid um, uh, base and then you top up with your liquid highlighter, it will blend well because of the textures. Whereas when you go matte and you want to put liquid, it might look like the blend will not look nice, but when you blend well, you will still get a very good result. So this is also good for your highlights. Now, blush brush. This is a blush brush by Real Technique, yeah? Me, personally, I would use this for blush, for powder, to blend out any liquid products that I have on my face or any powder that I've applied that I want to blend. This, for me, is very good, yeah? Because it does what I need it to do. It, so far as it does what I needed to do, I don't feel I have to go and spend money on each and every single brush just to get the application that I want, okay? So this is a blush brush. Yes, it's good for your cheeks. As you can see, it's tapered nicely. So when you apply that on your cheekbone, you go up and you are covered. So of course, this is good for your powder, but you can get some that are much smaller like this or something like that. This is good. Most of these small brushes are very good, especially for clients, because you don't want to make a mess and then try and correct it, but you want to start small and build. So when you have small brushes, they come very handy. And even for yourself, if you want to practice, I advise you use smaller brushes, because then you're able to control your products and where you place it before you go in with you know, the likes of these big ones. Okay, um, so you can use it all for the same thing, for your blush, your bronzing. It is still the same effect. It does the same job, so why not? Now, onto the lips. Um, I don't know where I was, and I remember applying, was there a lipstick on a client or on someone? I, was, I don't know. And someone was with us, and their response was, hold on, you go through all this step just for lips? And I said, yes. I didn't know that. For me, I just grabbed my lipstick and applied on my lips and then I'm good to go. 
which you can why not because lift sticks and are shaped anywhere they're quite pointy pointy at the edge so you're able to use that edge to line your lips and then fill them in it works just fine but what if you're not good with using that and you feel you always make a mess or you're always overlining your lips where you don't want it or you find it you know exceeding your lip line and it messes up your makeup you have to wipe it away and apply more products what do you do in that situation so for your lips the small brushes that i showed you earlier like um this type of brush this is good for your lips because when you apply your lipstick, let's say at the back of your hand, and you get some on there, apply it on your lips, very good precise application. And also very good to tidy around your lips if you have a foundation to do that, or a powder, or a concealer, it will all still do the same job. But this is also very good for your lips. Just apply your products on the brush, and onto your lips and you are good to go all right and you also have other ones that are angled as well so like the ones that i showed you earlier you have something like this or something like that or even something this flat yeah something this flat also does the job very well okay um reason why i'm showing a lot of different types is so that when you go through your kits or when you go to your own personal um, um items that you have you want to make sure that oh okay i can use this for that and i can use it for that i don't have to go out and spend a lot of money to get what i already have yeah my main thing with makeup is spend less look expensive because it's not all about brands when it comes to makeup, especially. It could be your foundation, it could be your powder. Foundation, I'm a bit biased, but not too biased because I do find that depending on the quality also really determines your results. But other times when you have that good perfect shade match, let's say in a drugstore foundation, and you are able to work it into your skin, and it blends well, why not? But you find that normally in the drugstore foundations, they are, the shades are a bit limited, especially for deeper skin tones. So oftentimes you would have to go for medium to high end range foundations, correct? So you can get the look that you want. So with all this brush tips and tricks, I hope that you have learned something from it and that when you go to your makeup collections and look at your tools, you can say, I can use this for that, and I can use this for that, and I can use this for that without feeling, I have to go and buy Beauty Blender, or this is this this has torn a little bit, I have to go and buy extra three. Meanwhile, you have brushes that can do the exact same job for you, okay? So bear that in mind to not overspend on things or tools that you already have. So I say that with brushes, it's very diverse. You can use it different looks or different steps of your look and still achieve the same results as if you were to go and buy another type of brush, okay? It's just mastering and using what you have. So don't forget to kindly like the page and follow the page so that you will keep up to date with the things that I upload and also in my next segment, we'll be looking at eyeshadows. It's the one thing that a lot of people tend to find very intimidating, eyeshadows, eyeshadows. We are going to look at eyeshadows on my next segment. So follow the page, like the page, so you would know when my next live show will be and we will talk more about it. And also, as I mentioned earlier, the service I provide, mainly um you know all things special locations events i've got you covered bridal photo shoot catwalk and all other special events i have been doing uh, makeup for quite some time and my love for makeup it's you know it's a drive it's it's my passion 
I can talk about makeup, I think, for an hour and I'll still not get bored. Two hours, I'll still be talking. Um, I genuinely love makeup and it's something that um, I'm happy I have grown into and I'm still learning. If you feel that you're at the stage where you think you've learned too much and you know it all, then there's a problem. You have to always learn, continue to learn. And so even as I'm speaking with you, I'm still learning, okay? I'm still experimenting on things, on brushes, tools, textures, and, you know, to see what will be the outcome. Because as every day you grow, you must learn. You must be very open to learning. And so, yeah, um, do like, follow, and help me share this as well, as I know it will be very useful to a lot of people. And as I said, next segment, we will be emphasizing and talking about eyeshadow. And I'm sure you don't want to miss that. We're going to talk about the textures, the mattes, the shimmers, and all of that. So thank you so much for coming on with me. And thank you all for your lovely comments. For those that are, that are here, thank you, Rose. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, um, Sister Intombi. Thank you all so much for coming on and I hope you've learned a lot as well. And for those who didn't comment about it online, thank you all so much also for coming on and I'll see you in my next segment. Have a wonderful day and I will see you all shortly. Bye. Hi, I'm Deborah. And yeah, I don't normally trust people to do my makeup, but the one person I trusted, Pat by Gloria, did not disappoint me. Uh, She's done my makeup twice and I must say both times she just shocked me. Um, the thing that I love about Gloria is that as she's doing your makeup she gives you tips, she talks you through whatever she's doing, she gives you recommendations, she analyzes your face and she's able to tell you um, and recommend you products that would work for you and products that maybe you should stay away from. I, I love Pathway Gloria and I can't wait to go back to get my face slayed. <laughs>